Okay, and welcome to these uh, tests. We're going to be looking at dynamic range and picture profiles for the Panasonic GH5. Uh, I'm also going to throw in some shots from the Sony A7S um, with the Atmos Assassin, just because that camera has a lot of dynamic range uh, and it's nice to compare different systems, in my opinion. Um, so the profiles we're going to be looking at for the GH5, we've got Natural, Cine D, B Log, and then for the Sony, we're going to be looking at Cine 4 and S Log 2. Uh, now, my custom profiles generally try to make everything as flat as possible, so across the board we're going to be bringing the contrast down, sharpness down, noise reduction down, and saturation down. Uh, so this is a scene that I've just uh, thrown together in the corner of my studio. Uh, I've just put a very strong light to one side, as you can see, uh, and we have a couple of areas of highlights, a couple of areas of shadows, um, so we need to be protecting the highlights, so the minute that the highlights get too blown, you know, we know we've gone too far. Uh, and we're also going to, going to be trying to uh, get as much information out of the shadows as possible. So if we have a look at the areas there by the, the Scout Trooper's right arm, uh, and on that Star Wars uh, album cover, um, there's K2SO, the robot's uh, face hidden in the shadows. So that's the shadow areas that we're going to be trying to get information out of. Uh, and then for the highlights, we've got that sort of white strip down the side of the Lego car, and that sort of uh, glare reflection coming off the, the Star Wars album cover as well. Uh, so that's the um, the scene, and that's kind of what we're protecting and what we're trying to what shadows we're trying to see into. So let's go straight into some uh, GH5 uh, shots. So uh, this is in natural natural profile, and uh, quite a few people have told me that you need to raise your ISO to uh, you know whatever. Lots of different numbers are spouted about, but um, basically they say that you need you need to raise your ISO a bit to get the most dynamic range. So I threw different ISO ranges into the mix here just to see if I could spot any difference. So here is ISO 200, um, here is ISO 400, here is ISO 800. Uh, now I couldn't see any difference whatsoever, but I, I've continued to add the ISOs into the mix um, for you. Now let's have a look at Cine D. So if I just flick back and forth there for a minute. So here's here's natural, here's Cine D, here's natural, here's Cine D. As you can tell, um, they look quite similar, but there's definitely more information in the shadows in the Cine D. We've, we can see a little bit more of K2SO's face now, so that's a good thing. Um, and the highlights are pretty much identical, but there's definitely more information in the shadows. So let's have a quick look at ISO 400 in Cine D, ISO 800 in Cine D, and then let's start over exposing slightly. So that's another thing a lot of people say about um, uh, Cine D. So I've exposed, overexposed by one stop here, um, and as you can see, the highlights have blown completely down the side of the Lego car and on that glare patch on the, the record cover. There is more information in the shadows, but our highlights are clipping in a nasty kind of way. And that's the same situation for ISO 400 and ISO 800. Um, so yeah, I would just say don't overexpose Cine D or Natural. I did test with that as well, and they, they're exactly the same in terms of the highlights. Let's have a look at our Vlog now. Now, um, remember this is with the GH4 and not the GH5, because I've yet to receive my uh, GH5 Vlog, but from all accounts it's pretty much the same, there's just going to be a bit less noise. And as noise isn't what we're looking at here, really, we're just looking at the dynamic range. Um, I feel quite confident going ahead and using the GH4 Vlog, because it is going to be very similar. So. Here it is exposed uh, normally, as you would for the entire scene. Um, as you can see, it is a lot flatter, there's more information. Uh, but one thing with Vlog, you generally do want to overexpose it, and I know that from practice. So let's add a stop of light in there. So this is it overexposed by one stop. As you can see, the highlights are still, still being protected, but they're just on the edge, just starting to go on those reflected, um, reflected areas. Um, but either way, that looks better. Let's raise the ISO now and go back down to normal exposure for a Vlog. So this is ISO 800, uh, and that looks pretty much the same to me as the ISO uh, 400, it's just slightly noisier. And now let's bump it up to uh, the 800 exposed one stop over again. And once again, that, to me, that looks exactly the same as the ISO 400 one stop over. It's just got more noise, basically. So. OK, let's have a look at the um, Sony A7S Assassin with the same uh, scene, the same light and everything. So this is going out into ProRes HQ. So it's a very high quality um, coming out the side of the Assassin over HDMI. 
Um, so it's a little bit of an unfair fight against the GH5, but I just wanted to compare it to uh, another camera with a very good dynamic range, basically, so we can sort of side-by-side of side them. Uh, so here we have the Cine 4 profile at ISO 200, exposed uh, for the whole scene, sort of bang in the middle there. Uh, and as you can see, it's quite a con contrasty uh, profile of the Cine 4, but it's, it's, I quite like it. And then if we have a look at that ISO 400, and then ISO 800, and now let's go up to 3200, I'm making a bit of a jump there because I wanted to compare that to the S-Log at 3200. Um, I have to bring in an ND filter here for this, by the way, so bear that in mind. There is a slight color cast because of the uh, ND filter, but it's, it's, it's a good quality ND filter, so it shouldn't be um, make a tremendous difference. Uh, now let's have a look at our S-Log. So first of all, this is our S-Log exposed, um, you know, bang in the middle, as the camera would suggest you do if you left it up to the camera. Now let's overexpose it by a full stop. And again, that's that's looking good. The highlights are still very protected, lots of information. Now let's go to where I think the sweet spot is, and that's uh, two stops over. So an S-Log2, two stop overexposure, seems to be about right. The highlights are still well in well in, in control, but they are just, just on the edge of starting to go. And we can see more information in, in the shadows there, so that's all good. Um, Okay, so after all those those shots there, uh, what have we got to say? So first of all, about raising the ISO, uh, in my opinion, now I've been stretching and pulling, I know I haven't shown that to you, but the video would just go on all day if I showed you everything I did to this, um, but I have been stretching, you know, raising the shadows, bringing down the highlights, messing around with all of these shots, uh, and in my opinion, if you raise the ISO um, on the GH5 or the GH4 or the Sony A7S, you do not get more dynamic range. You just don't. You just get more noise. Um, now, if someone wants to tell me that I'm wrong, and a lot of people think I'm wrong on that, so if I am definitely wrong, then please direct me to a test which shows otherwise, because in my tests, fairly controlled tests, I know these aren't scientific tests, but pretty controlled tests, um, raising the ISO does not give extra dynamic range it just adds more noise. So in my opinion, don't do it. Keep your ISO as low as possible on both cameras, on, on any camera really. Um, now for the, the GH4 and the GH5, Natural and Cine-D, they don't hold the highlights very well. So don't overexpose them. Uh, keep it ju just about bang on, maybe a tiny bit over, but protect the highlights. Uh, Cine-D gains more, sh more shadow information over Natural, definitely. Uh, but it doesn't have more highlight information, it just adds a little bit more information to the shadows. V-Log holds highlights pretty well, and you can go one stop and a little bit more, I'm about a stop and a half over, and you should be fine. Um, but it does add a fair amount of noise into those shadows which are emerging and suddenly, you know, appearing, but they are quite noisy shadows, but at least that information is there, it's better than no information. Uh, the colour, now this is a big downside, so with the V-Log, um, the colour out of all of these shots, out of all of these profiles, the V-Log on the Panasonic is by far the worst for colour. It really messes things up. Um, I'll show you in a bit with my colour corrections, but I had to redo the white balance. I had to do a lot of things just to make the shots look um, even remotely good. So it will mess with your skin tones. It will mess with your colour as a V-Log, no doubt about that. S-Log does a little bit, but nowhere near as much as the, the V-Log. Uh, Natural and CD are both good for colour, but Natural has a slight edge. So... Um, bear that in mind, natural is the best for colour on the GH4, GH5. Now on the Sony, uh, Cine 4 ProRes has a fair amount of latitude in terms of bringing the shadows back. It is quite contrasty, but you can bring them back and they are still quite clean. Uh, and it holds highlights better than the GH5, natural or Cine D. Um, it's definitely, you know, the Sony definitely has a bit more headroom in those highlights. And S-Log hold, holds the highlights really well. You can go, you know, two stops over and a little bit more, two and a half stops sometimes. Uh, and it'll still be protected depending on you know what area the, of the shot you're concentrating on. Uh, but it does have noisy shadows, just like the V-Log. They both introduce a fair amount of noise into the shadows. No real advantage one over the other. Now let's have a look at the... So forget about the, the different ISO ranges. Let's have a look at uh, the best one from each one, which is the lowest ISO from each one, basically. Uh, and then do a quick colour correction. So here's the natural um, ISO 200 exposure normal. 
And then to this one, I've basically just tried to bring up the shadows, tried to get some of that information back from that um, shadowy area where the, the robot is being sort of hidden there on the on the album cover. Uh, and we can see more information in it, the Stormtrooper's arm. So we've recovered a bit of shadow information and we've still protected the highlights. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going for each one of these, seeing how much of the shadows I can bring back without it looking like crap. I could go a bit further, but it starts to look, you know, very sort of blocky and crappy if I go much further than that. Now with the Cine D, um, so here is it out of camera. And now let's have a look at, this is ISO 200. Again, remember, this is what I would say is the best one. Uh, let's have a look at the color correction on that. So we've got more shadow information recovered from this one. So um, it was there was more inf shadow information there anyway out of camera. So it's no surprise that there's a little bit more. Uh, and that's about as good as I can get out of the, the Cine D. Now let's have a look at the V-Log. So this is the V-Log out of the camera. And let's do a quick color correction on this name. As you can see, um, the colors, I really have struggled with the colors here to try to you know, bring them back to what they were originally, as it looks but from the human eye. It tends to make everything go very sort of yellowy and, and insipid looking, uh, the V-Log, and you have to do quite a lot of fiddling around. Now I was using the eyedropper tool and using the Color Checker Pro to do my white balance. Um, so the white balance, in theory, should be you know nice and equal across all of these shots by using the Color Checker. Uh, but it, it, the rest of the colours just do get a little bit awry. They do get everything that becomes a bit sort of yellowy and, and pissy looking. So, uh, and again, sorry, this is my exposure plus one version of the vlog, which I think is the the best one. Okay, so let's have a look at the um, the A7S and the Assassin. And now the Cine Four uh, shot uh, sort of normally exposed, protecting those highlights. If we bring those shadows up quite a lot, we can see we can gain, regain a fair amount of information. Um, it's really not bad for bringing the shadows back on this uh, the Cine 4 profile on the Sony. Um, and that's that all kind of brought out. We're still predicting those shadows and we can see a bit more of the Scout Trooper's arm again and a bit more of K2SO. Uh, now let's have a look at the S-Log. Uh, so this is the plus two exposed two, two stops over, which I think is kind of a sweet spot for my tests. Uh, and those highlights have still got headroom, still plenty of headroom in the highlights, no problem there at all. Uh, if we have a look at the colour corrective one, um, now the shadows are, there is more shadows there definitely, you can see more information, but they are a bit noisy, so um, bear that in mind that um, you will be getting more noise introduced into those shadows. Of course you don't necessarily have to bring them back that far, you could crush them a little bit more and get rid of that noise, but you know the whole part of this test is seeing how much dynamic range we can get out of each one of these shots. Um, so there you go, that's my pick from each profile with a quick colour correction on. So my favourite from each camera now, after doing all these tests, is, as you probably might have already guessed, it's the, it's the Cine 4 at ISO 200, exposed normally, basically, but protecting the highlights a little bit. You can expose a, you can expose a little bit to the right with Cine 4, but not don't go crazy. Uh, and with the highlights brought back up in, in post. And I think this is the, the cleanest and the best I can get out of the uh, Assassin and the Sony A7S. And I think there's plenty of dynamic range there. Um, on a sunny day, you'd, your, your highlights on faces and things would be protected quite happily and you should have enough information in the shadows to you know, re recover them a fair bit if you need to. Now, as for the GH5 uh, and GH4, um, Cine D is going to be my, my recommendation. It seems to have, there's not as much um, uh, dynamic range as the V-Log, but the V-Log just sacrifices too many things in terms of colour uh, and also, you know, adding noise and stuff. And it it's just not a nice file, not, not a nice format to, to work with, not a nice profile to work with, I should say. Um, so I would say Cine D expose correctly and protect those highlights because you will lose those highlights quite quickly. Um, so protect the highlights with Cine D and raise the, the shadows you know, a bit more and you can get a, a nice amount of dynamic range. And yeah, that's my two recommendations. So the, the Cine 4 on the Sony and the Cine D on the GH5. And if we compare those two side by side, yeah, they both look really quite nice and they both have a very similar amount of information in the shadows, very similar amount of noise. Uh, Sony is going to be cleaner. It's, it's a you know four frame sensor. It's a larger sensor. It's, it doesn't have as much to fight with in terms of noise. Um, but yeah, so they both look like lovely clean images. There is differences in the color. There is differences there. 
uh, but in terms of dynamic range and you know color reproduction and all the rest of it, I think they're both on a par with each each other. Um, and I would say it's possible that the GH4 and Sony D are slightly more natural looking colors. Uh, the Sony tends, tends to do some odd things with blues and makes them a bit more kind of purpley and stuff. Uh, but either way, um, yeah, really quite similar. I wouldn't necessarily choose one over the other. So there you go, guys. Uh, in summary from today's test, so um, V-Log and S-Log definitely has the most dynamic range. There's no doubt about that. But they do both introduce a fair amount of uh, noise into those shadows. And V-Log really mangles the colours. Uh, now, you will be able to get LUTs, which help you fight that. But, it, it, you know, once you've... Once you've messed up your colours, it really can be quite difficult to get them back. Uh, so be warned, V-Log. If you have issues with skin tones with V-Log, I just won't be surprised, basically. Um, now, when I get my copy of V-Log for the GH5, I may change my mind on this. So, you know, bear that in mind. Um, of the two, if I had to choose one of the log profiles, I would definitely choose the S-Log 2 over the V-Log and having that two stops over. Um, but like I say, you know, this may, may well change when I get the V-Log for GH5. Maybe it's very different from the V-Log in GH4. I don't think it's going to be. I think it's going to be, my, my opinion is going to be the same. Um, but bear that in mind. I am, I'm going by the, the GH4 V-Log at this point. Uh, other thing to consider is that at the moment, 10-bit GH5 files really don't work properly and they crash my system. They crash a lot of other people's systems. When we get some updates and we can actually start working with it, again, things may change when we're working in those 10-bit files. At present, I'm working in 8-bit because I can't use the 10-bit files from the GH5. I can use 10-bit files from anything else, but I cannot use those 10-bit files from the GH5. Uh, I can't even preview them properly because they, they, we just need the updates. So for the GH5, I prefer the Cine D, exposed about right, protecting the highlights, so exposing normally, basically. Um, with the shadows raised a little bit just to give you a little bit more dynamic range. Um, if the skin tones are very important and it's not a contrasty shot, then do consider natural because it does have the best colour profile in my opinion. When it comes to the Sony, I prefer the Cine 4, slightly overexposed but still protecting those highlights and with the shadows uh, raised in post. So S-Log 2 is also fine um, but you do get a lot more noise in those shadows and you will need you know stronger NDs and all the rest of it because your ISO is raised quite a lot. So S-Log2 is really quite a nice profile also but I still prefer Cine4 um, with the actual profile set as flat as you can get it um, and with those shadows raised a little bit in post. Anyway, so there you guys, that's the summary. Now, this, this is a tricky test to do because there's so many different things I could do, so many different things I could try. Um, you know, I pretty much spent a full day <laughs> doing these tests. So, uh, you know, there's, there, I'm sure there's people going to be recommending that I should have done this, should have done that. Uh, and I, maybe they're going to be suggesting that I don't know what I'm on about, <laughs> which is, yeah, I'm not a, a know-it-all, knows everything. I just do tests, which I want to know the answers for. And then I share the, res the results and hope that those results are uh, useful. Um, but yeah, bear that in mind. But I am open in terms of if you want to suggest a better way to do things, put it in the comments and I will read them and I will be interested in hearing your opinion. Anyway, guys, I hope those tests were useful. Um, I think I've learned a bit today. I'm not massively surprised by some of these results, but it's nice to have a few, a few things confirmed in terms of not raising the ISO and, and things like that. Um, it's definite that I will be using Cine D more than I used to because I think it's possible that it has improved on the GH5 over the GH4 because it used to have worse colours on the GH4. Um, anyway, regardless, I hope you guys learned something and this video was useful and I'll see you next time. Bye.